When COVID-19 spread across the world, death rates spiked. We all know this, but what many of us don't realize is that mortality rates have been going up for years in young adults well before COVID, at least in the United States. In fact, since 1999, the number of young adults dying in the United States per year has gone up 60%. Suicide, overdose, and homicide are driving much of the increases in these numbers. Stress, anxiety, depression, and loneliness continue to rise. And what can we do about it? And more importantly, in my opinion, how can we reverse it to actually foster happiness and health and build the life of our dreams? Some ancient teachings and research suggest that an answer could be in having an open body, heart, mind, and spirit. An element of mindfulness is remembering, or in other words, remembering to bring our wisdom into this present moment. Wherever we get our wisdom from, it's expressed in the body, heart, mind, and spirit. Listening to that wisdom through having these parts open and actually applying that wisdom to this present moment can foster happiness and health and enable us to build the life we want. In this talk, I'll show you how. Specifically, I'll invite you to ask yourself four pairs of questions. Is my body open? And if not, why not? And similarly, is my heart open? Is my mind open? And is my spirit open? And if not, why not? Let's begin with a story. Brady was a student in a course I teach at Brown University called Meditation, Mindfulness, and Health. He had ulcerative colitis, which is a disease that causes ulcers in the intestine. It's painful. When it begins in childhood, as it did for him, it's often triggered by stress. Brady was stressed and not sleeping well. And during the course, he learned to better listen to his body and mind. For example, he learned about the triangle of awareness, where we learn to monitor our thoughts and emotions and physical sensations in a non-judgmental and curious way. He also learned how to better place his mind where he wanted to place it, through focused attention meditations, where we train ourselves to concentrate on a specific object of meditation, such as the breath, a part of the body, or even sound. In doing so, he started to find that he became more aware of where his thoughts were at. In doing so, he found that he was able to almost better, less spin his mind towards the, the future and the past, including when he was trying to go to sleep. He started sleeping better and even came off his melatonin. As a result, he started to find that he felt that the extra amount of sleep was allowing the ulcers in his intestine to heal better. And his self-awareness started to show him that when he ate certain foods, such as vegetables and lean meats, that the symptoms of his ulcerative colitis lessened. He started to feel happier and healthier and began to live more the life that he wanted. And so students dared me or challenged me to scale up this course to be able to provide it to more people. And so we developed the mindfulness-based college program for young adults and I wrote a book called The Mindful College Student, How to Succeed, Boost Well-Being and Build the Life of Your Dreams at, at University and Beyond. And so what we started to do is to do some research on the mindfulness-based college program, and we found in a randomized controlled trial that students going through the program had significantly improved overall well-being over the course of the term compared to the students in the control group. We found significant effects on depression, loneliness, sedentary behavior, and even sleep quality. As I wrote the book, The Mindful College Student, I began to see how the self-regulation skills of self-awareness and emotion regulation and attention control intersect with some ancient Buddhist teachings found in the Sutra on Breathing Mindfulness. In many ways, these teachings boil down to connecting with and caring for four things, the body, the heart, the mind, and the spirit. And I found that by asking ourselves four pairs of questions that we can better scan ourselves to see how we're doing and also to identify places that we can better heal and thrive. And here are those questions again. And so as we explore these questions, I invite you to try them on for size. No pressure to really do this if you feel like it's not a good fit for you. It's just something to explore if you feel comfortable with it. And so 
let's start with the first question around, is my body open? And so what I would invite you to do in this moment is to stretch. Many of us have been sitting here for a while. And so if you like, for example, even allowing the arms to come up above the head, reaching all the way to the sky, and just notice what sensations are being felt in the body in this moment. I know, it's a little weird, it's okay. Allowing the arms to come down as you're ready. And so the intention of an open body is to just connect in with it and see if it's open. Or in other words, is it feeling good, light, healthy, or free? And if it isn't, we can care for it, as Thich Nhat Hanh shared, kind of like a parent would, a crying child. That we can allow the body to be just as it is in this moment, understanding it better, caring for it with kindness and compassion. And then in time, as it settles, we can start to look at the root causes of what's causing the body to be closed or agitated or less than fully open. And then we can see what insights might arise around what are skillful next steps to care for the body and allow it to open. Sometimes it might be eating more healthily or getting physical activity, perhaps minimizing alcohol and substance use, or perhaps getting psychological or medical help to begin to process and heal from a trauma or an injury. And so in doing so, we can start to care for the body and foster health and well-being. So, we got the body sorted out in a couple minutes. And so why don't we start to shift on to the second question of, is my heart open? And so with the heart or the emotions, I invite you right now to actually check in with your emotional tone as you're watching this TEDx talk. And so what feeling tones are here in this moment? Perhaps it's ease or curiosity or joy or agitation. Whatever the feeling tones are, are fine, just noticing them without any judgment, with acceptance, respecting your limits. And so with the emotions, you know, sometimes we might notice that the emotions are driven sizably by circumstances outside of our control. For example, if we're experiencing discrimination or transgenerational poverty, you might be wondering, like, how could an open heart help with that? And we can offer you know, self-care and self-kindness, knowing that sometimes our emotions are driven by factors sizably outside of our control. And then we can see what wisdom is encompassed in that emotion and skillfully respond to that wisdom. Sometimes, you know, caring for the emotions might be through just simply caring for the basic needs of the body, whether it's through healthy eating or physical activity or getting enough sleep within our abilities. Other times we might play around with actually deliberately fostering joy and happiness, such as observing and letting in everyday things like the smile of a child or the clear blue sky. And so we can notice our emotions and care for them and understand that there's important data in those emotions. As we allow them to settle and understand the root causes, we can see what our wisdom shares is a skillful next step and then act on that step. And so the third, the third question is, is, is my mind open? And so if we explore that, you know, even taking a moment, if you like, to just see what are your thoughts right now? kind of noticing the thought patterns, whatever they are, knowing that they're just thoughts that we don't need to act on unless we choose to. So sometimes our self-awareness can share that our thoughts are maybe unhelpful in this moment. And then we can use our skills of attention control to redirect our thoughts towards somewhere that's maybe more productive or more helpful. Other times we can laser in on those thoughts and really see them and understand them and care for them, allow them to settle and then start to understand the root causes of what is allowing those thoughts to come up and then see what our wisdom shares is a wise next step. One thing that we can play around with, with opening the mind is the idea of liberating the mind or freeing the mind 
from any kind of cravings or aversions to something that's maybe not so healthy to avoid. And so then, if you'd like, we can move on to the last question, the fourth question of, is my spirit open? And so I invite you to consider for a moment, what is your definition of spirit? And honestly, I would trust your definition. I often consider spirit to be the intermingling of the emotions and the body, consciousness, or in other words, the soul or our true self. And how do we open to that? How do we become our true selves? It's no big deal in a 12 minute talk. So what I would offer is to even consider what fosters opening your spirit or what fosters opening your true self? For some of us, it might be prayer or participating in a religious community, perhaps being in nature or having a meaningful conversation with someone we adore. Opening the spirit is personal and best driven by our own inner wisdom. I can only provide so many directions here, but I can cheer you on. And so, you know, one thing that we can do to play around with opening the spirit is the concept of letting go. Or in other words, letting go of any ways of thinking or habits that no longer serve us or our communities. It might have been something that we learned as a kid. It's possible to change the way that we think and to change our behaviors. Neuroplasticity is a real thing. Behavior change is fierce, and it's possible, and we can do it. So in summary, an element of mindfulness is remembering to bring our wisdom into this present moment. We can unlock the wisdom that is sitting in the body, heart, mind, and spirit. It wants to come out. And to the degree that we can unlock or open it, maybe the degree to which at this moment in history, with all the challenges that it has, that we can better understand our true selves. In doing so, we may find that we can better connect in with our surroundings to optimize our mental and physical well-being. As a result, we may find that not only are we happier and healthier, but we are more grounded and have greater energy to skillfully support the happiness and health of the communities we care for. Thank you.